Now, back at home, there are currently about 2,200 colonias along the border from Brownsville to El Paso. That's according to former Secretary of State Carlos Cascos. And doesn't agree with the governor's recent veto, eliminated about $900,000 in colonia funding. Channel 5's Daisy Martinez spoke with him today and the effects these cuts could have. Secretary of State Carlos Cascos tells us there's at least 400,000 people living in colonias along the border. He tells us the recent state cuts eliminate the ombudsman program. These were licensed in seven counties along the border in which people help the colonia residents find the programs and resources they needed. He says without them, the rift between the colonias and finding funding becomes even bigger. It took 18 years for these residents to see lights go up near their homes in La Paloma. Progress is slow, okay. but it's happening. This colonia is located off Highway 281 on the outskirts of San Benito. Romelia Melendez says there's a lot more improvements she'd like to see around here to better residents' quality of life. More parks for children because nowadays they're just getting addicted to their to their electronics mm -hmm. so the children can actually play for Eugenio Cantu who lives just down the road in the colonia known as El Ranchito the issues are the streets and lack of drainage systems we use a bunch of septic tanks right here there's three lines in our yard and over here our next door neighbor put some brand new ones sometimes it gets clogged up and me, ourselves, like our owner, we have to like <laughs> do it ourselves, flush out the, all the nasty stuff. Former Secretary of State Carlos Casco says these are the realities that some 400,000 people living in colonias along the border face. Instead of cutting funding for the Colonia Ombudsman program last week, he says, Governor Greg Abbott should have reallocated that money to help these underserved communities in another way. When you have people living in those kinds of conditions, crime, you know, is going to escalate. Uh, kids can, may not be able to get to school because the buses cannot go into these colonias because of the road conditions. You have health concerns because they don't have, you know, a clean water system. They don't have uh, wastewater. They're, they're relying on, on septic tanks. Gasco says counties and cities can't afford to solely provide the infrastructure or services the 2,200 colonias along the border need. Texas really needed to come up with a with a long-term comprehensive plan as to how to address colonias. They're not going to go away. Uh, and I know that the, 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 the financial ticket, no one really knows. The number I heard was a billion dollars. Uh, but you do it one year at a time. Melendez and Cantu both say they want to see lawmakers on the ground so they can get a clear picture of what it's like to live in a colonia. Cascos tells us Cameron, Hidalgo, and Star County all have an ombudsman in that area. He tells us out of all the counties participating in the ombudsman program, Hidalgo County is the one with the most colonias. From the Cameron County Newsroom, Daisy Martinez, Channel 5 News at 6.